Hello and welcome back to another Monster Hunter video. I'm honestly really enjoying Monster Hunter by the way. And what I'm going to be showing in this one is a brief introduction on how armors have changed from those that have played it on, well, previous consoles, which is back when Monster Hunter was first released on the PlayStation 2, and how armors then were on handheld, if you played it on handheld, mainly Monster Hunter for you because that's the most recent Monster Hunter, really. I don't, I'm not going to count generations because it was generations. Ugh. And as well as the route in which I took with these armors, because it's, it's only low rank. Decent bit of skill will get you pretty much through the majority of the low rank content. So I'm just going to show you the route I took, how I went about it, and what I'm basically doing now. So in truth, from the start, adding in the whole how the armors used to be and how they are now, I'm still up in arms as to whether I like it or not. And for those that don't know, how it used to work is you used to have blade master sets and gunner sets. Gunners were for bow, light bow gun and heavy bow gun. And if you were wearing a gunner set and you wanted to put a blade on, you had to change armor. The main differences between these two armors, notably, would be the defense value. The gunner set would be roughly half of what the blade master's defense value would be, as well as the fact that there will be certain skill changes. Things like defense, health, attack up, thing. The, the basics, really, they would be the same regardless. But where the Blade Master would have something like Handicraft or Speed Sharpening, the Gunner set would have Load Up or Reload Speed, etc, etc. So that would be sort of the main difference. The second difference in which they have done on this, which again, I'm still not too sure if I like, although they have done a different way in doing it with the high rank which I will go into briefly near the end of the video. Now the way in which this change has actually happened is typically a single armor set will give you perks. These perks were given in drips and drabs. Basically a helmet would have, I'll put, it, put this simply, you had five pieces of armor plus a necklace or a charm. On each piece you would get plus two essentially or negative two for a skill for example health so if you had a full set of plus two on every piece so your head chest arms waist legs that would give you a total of plus ten on your health to activate the actual skill you needed to have plus ten it would then scale to plus 15, plus 20, plus 25, plus 30, depending on how high that skill would go. But if you wanted that active skill to actually have a part in your game, you needed to have it at plus 10. And a lot of people actually found this quite confusing, I will admit, because I saw so many people that just had like one point on a shit ton of different skills. But if you actually looked at their active skill screen, they had nothing. They literally had no skills active whatsoever. Which for a lot of people this became very confusing, especially trying to communicate that across over something like a Nintendo DS. So in that respect, the skill change they've done is actually really good. However, it's also really bad now because where they have an added Blade Master and Gunner sets. So on this, we have Attack Boost and Divine Blessing, which we're going to ignore because I have a charm for that. So the skills for this actual armor set are Fire Resistance, Fire Attack, Special Ammo Boost, Artillery, and Marathon Runner. Now, despite the fact that you look like a knight, you should have a sword with this. This would typically be the general appearance of most Blade Master sets. But as you can see, I've got a skill on this called Special Ammo Boost. Shock Horror, Special Ammo Boost. Clues in the name, Ammo. This is for Gunners. So if you really, really like the look of the Anger set, and you really want to stick with the Anger set, and you like using, I don't know, a Sword and Shield, you have a useless skill on there. There's nothing you can do about that. 
apart from get rid of it. What's the actual one that gives has that? That would be the gloves. So you'd have to wear different gloves. Maybe the Hornethor. What is the Hornethor? That gives you a free meal. Leap of Faith. Defense boost. They are. So we could go with... That. Which, admittedly, doesn't look too bad. But then if you start thinking, oh, I want to mix and match all of my skills because I don't particularly like any of them, and you end up with something like this, now you look like a twat. Which is essentially what this game is going to be doing. Which wouldn't mind too much, essentially, if you could get things like transmogs or skins to put over the armors so that you could look semi-decent. There is currently one in the game, but you've got to pay for it through the deluxe pack and you just look like a dodgy fat samurai. Not my thing, really. So, that's basically how the skills in this game work. And to level them up, you would have to, in essence, find a bunch of skills that are all very similar. So, let's go to skills. Uh, let's go for something pretty darn simple, which is defense. Three results are found. So, I'd have to equip that glove, or that glove. Let's go with that one. Screw it. And these trousers. And if I went to my skills... As you can see, I've got a slight increase on defense boost because I've got two items on that give me defense boost. If I take one of them off, put those on, my defense boost drops by one. If I put these back on, defense boost is back up. So in order to level up the skills in this, you have to equip armors of that skill. Now, as you can see, something with like attack boost, there's a lot of notches in there. I don't even think there's enough armor pieces for me to put on that will level that up. Yeah, you can get charms with that will give you plus three straight away if you level up the charm. But that's still a bit iffy because you still have to juggle the rest of your armor set to get decent skills and sets. Quick one onto the high ranks. This is a bit weird. Um, best one I can really show is on the armor I'm currently trying to get, which is the Zora armor because it looks so fucking Dark Souls. But... On this armor, you can see here, I actually do have a lot of skills, a lot more than normal. That's because each piece gives me two skills. The helmet gives me handicraft and blast attack. The gloves give me blast attack and windproof. The gloves give me free element or ammo up and bombardier. Fortify tremor airs and then bombardier and earplugs. This is great. And the only reason I'm building this one at the moment, which is the Zora Alpha and not the Zora Beta, is quite simple because I don't have decorations yet. Now, decorations are items you would put in a slot, which means you can customise your own skills. You want more health up, you put the decorations in, and you can give yourself more health, much akin to what I was talking about previously, where a lot of people mix-matched their skills. You don't need to go to plus 10 on this, you just need to put that one decoration in, and it does give you a certain amount. And the higher level you put that decoration, it will give you more and more and the way you would do that is by going for the beta armors which do look slightly different they do still have their own inbuilt skill but as you can see on the right hand side this one only has handicraft however if you look up at the top just under where it's the, the defense it says slots and there's two dashes they're the slots where you can put decorations different decorations have a different capacity some might only take up one slot some will take up two now if i go back to the previous zora helmet you can see again Straight away, I now have two skills, but I have zero slots, along with the fact that you just generally look better. Now with this, you could probably mix and match the sets. You won't look too bad, I don't think. Really, realistically, they kind of go okay, depending on how you want to do it. Some will look better than others, but you can mix and match the skills here to give yourself a semi-decent looking bit of armor as well as the fact that in this game you also get set bonuses now this is highlighted by if i can actually just keep it up that's what she said this number here so this is the zora magdaros mastery it will have a number that is the number of items you need to get this bonus and it's critical status and the way you find out what that is go simply back into your skills 
go to the last page, you've got Zora, Magdaros, Mastery, and it increases abnormal effect status, such as paralysis, poison, sleep, blast, when landing critical hits. This is actually really good, again, for a gunner, because particularly as me, I play a status gunner, so I'm always putting something to sleep, poisoning it or paralyzing it. I think it's a really great way to play, and it definitely opens up a lot of gaps for the Blade Masters on my team. Anyway, on to the progression in which I made it through this game. So, if you didn't get the DLC, which is where we're going to start with, and I will filter in quickly with one point of where the DLC would start. If you didn't get the DLC, you're going to either pick Lever or Chainmail. There is not really any difference between these two. All this one gives is Hunger Resistance, and all this one gives is Master Gatherer. They both have Soddle Defense at two per piece. There we are, depressing. And from there, you're going to pick up a new armor pretty quick. Now, if you've got the DLC, your defense will start at six, akin to the Hunters, but eh. So, but from there, you'll either collect bone armor if you didn't get the DLC, because this is really easy to farm for. It. It's simply just bones. Go around and collect friggin' bones and get a few Kestodon shells. This will give you a pretty good standing to go in through the rest of the game, or if not, the first monster, you, the large monster you really come across will be the Great Jagras, which again, defense is a little bit higher at eight, but it's not really gonna give you the most benefit. I'll show the skills there again quickly. It's, the skills aren't really gonna be too much of a major factor. However, if you are a gunner and you're liking the guns and you're wanting to stick with the guns, I do recommend going for the Jagras just because it has Intimidator, which basically means you're less likely to have one of the little bastard minions from the Jag Great Jagras blocking your shots, getting in your way, biting you when you're trying to take a potion, etc, etc, etc. Not too much of a problem for a Blade Master because they can just spin around and give it a friggin' slap and go back to stabbing Big Nasty. From here, the alloy armor is actually a pretty good shout, particularly if you're a blade master. If you're not a blade master, Baroth can be okay. However, the Jura is pretty much where you're gonna want to go, simply because of the focus. From here, you basically have two choices, and depending on how you're wanting to actually progress, and I'm going to skip high metal, king beetle. And Hornetor, although I will show you the Hornetor because it looks hilarious. From here, as a gunner, I would recommend the Kadachi. Ignoring the hat, it's horrendous. Simply because you have Evade Extender and Constitution, which is going to be really handy for those dodges, particularly for heavy bow guns. If you've still got the weapon out, Evade Extender is going to be absolutely great for you. And Constitution will help with bows because you're constantly pounding out those arrows, which does affect your stamina. Now, this is where it does get a little bit tricky, because as previously mentioned, some skills do not fit what you're doing. The Anger Armor is very good, simply because it is quite defensive. You've got Fire Resistance, as well as Fire Attack. Artillery, for things like your Gun Lances, your Switch Axe, your Charles Blaze. However, this also does affect your Bow Guns. Marathon Runner, which is also really freaking great, but the one catch will be Special Ammo Boost. This is pretty much useless for Blade Masters. It is really good for heavy bow guns, bows, and light bow guns. So as much as this armor would benefit Blade Masters the most, it does give you a useless skill. However, again, if you are confident, you can skip that and go for Rathian. This will be a very good armor set for you to get unless you're female because you get the most hideous looking skirt if your character's female prepared to look like a weirdo but this does give you some definite benefits from here there are three ways you can actually go I did go a different route and that's just because I'm a nut job but you can go for Giros which looks really cool and does give you some pretty helpful bonuses. Horn Maestro is great if you are loving the hunting horn. So if you're using a hunting horn and you're loving it, this is your armor set, seriously. 
The next one would be the Balm Armor, which is very, very good for the bow guns because it has slugger and guard. Using things like pier shots and pellet shots, you can keep things quite stun locked effectively, which is really, really good. And from there, you have the Legiana, which is again, this is actually pretty good for both bow gun for gunners and blade masters. However, this can be a bit of a nightmare to actually farm mainly because a lot of what you've come across so far doesn't have the greatest ice resistance and this does also have good luck which does mean it is a great farming armor good luck basically gives you a chance to have better rewards in the end of mission now the armor i went with and what you can probably see me wearing at the moment is the odor garen now the odor garen literally gives you no benefits as a gunner it's got quick sheath, which is probably more useful for blade masters, getting in and out of danger quickly. Constitution, which is, can be handy, handy for both. Critical eye, which can be handy for both. Attack boost, always handy. However, the main one is speed sharpening. This is a useless skill for a gunner. I'm a gunner. The only reason I got this armor is one, it looks really cool. And two, I have seen so many people struggle with this monster that I had to get it as a nice sort of, eh, look what I went and got because I'm just that sort of person. Now, if you are quite simply wanting the best armor to go into high rank with, Rathalos would probably be the best one, simply because it has weakness exploit. Now, a lot of people always do swear by the old Diablos armor. There is just one slight problem. He's a wanker. He is an absolute fucking nightmare to farm. He really is. He hits like an absolute fucking truck. Surprisingly for his size, he moves really quick. He digs under the ground and comes out in unexpected places and flies through sand walls and comes up under the ground. Oh, he's, he's, he's a fucker. Ignore it. So that is basically the armor path that I would suggest and I have taken. Anything I've done differently just because I'm that, I'm that idiot. I went with the Odegaran. However, in a perfect world, I would have gone with the Legiana. It looks a little bit better in my opinion. And it would have served me better, but like I said, it's still low rank. When things get to high rank, you're going to want to start paying attention to those sorts of things. If you know a monster will hit you with a fireball, don't go into it with negative 15 fire defense. At minimum, have it at zero fire defense, but preferably try at least get 10 to 15 fire defense on there it will help you stay alive and if you are playing as a team the last thing your team wants is people to go in and get completely rinsed anyway that will bring this to a close thank you very much and i'll see you guys pretty damn soon Ta -ra.